What's going on everybody? It's your boy Dropping Hits and I'm back with another top 10 video for you guys. Today's video is the top 10 male participants from 60 Days In. Smartest to dumbest. <laughs> now these are just my opinions and your thoughts will probably differ from mine, but regardless, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Now, about Narcoland, man, it's just boring, which is why I haven't uploaded any videos of the show. I mean, we watch it when I live stream, and that's about all I can take. I can't watch it a second time. It's just boring. There's nothing happening. They need to go back to the old Six Days In format, and I hope they do. And with that being said, if you're into gaming or just want to discuss my videos with myself or the chat, Make sure you follow me on Mixer so you can catch my live streams. We're always talking about 60 Days In, and I would love to hear what you guys got to say. The link to my Mixer channel is in the description below. Now, let's drop into the intro. So the first participant on my list is Nate from Season 3. Not only did he stay an extra 60 Days In, sacrificing his relationship with his fiance but in my opinion he was one of the most respected participants in fulton county hell the most respected out of all the seasons honestly he was able to blend in pretty quickly with the gang members and they even were ready to have his back when his tablet was getting smashed up by the other inmate they made that inmate roll out quick they were ready to shake him and everything <laughs> they rolled him out and he could pretty much go to any inmate have a conversation with him, any kind of any kind of beef he may have. Yeah, they accepted him pretty much is what it comes down to. Nate was one of the smartest, if not the smartest, participant of the show, in my opinion. Number nine would be Zach. Zach is from season one, and like Nate, he was also a Marine and he was able to blend in pretty quickly. He kept to himself and he was able to earn the trust of the other inmates pretty quickly. From learning how hooch was made, to how the drugs were being brought in, they were pretty much showing Zach how shit was done. And they're not gonna do that with just any inmate they don't trust. But not only that, he also tried to show other participants, even though he knew they were not in the program, he was trying to help others showing the ropes and stuff like that. Plus, he never got in any drama, he kept to himself, like I said, and he pretty much walked away from the show successfully completing his mission. Number eight is John from season three. I had my doubts on John because he just looks like, I mean, he doesn't look like he belonged at all. But so his cover story was good. He went in there, but his strategy was pretty much, I think a fail safe. He went in there to pretty much reach a couple of inmates and they reached one in particular which was Deshaun even though at times Deshaun annoyed the hell out of him John has a good heart and he really cared about Deshaun which I have a lot of respect for John was also able to adapt to how things were being done in the pod and carried himself pretty well for someone who had never been in jail before he's on the other side of the fence you know he's, he's about criminal reform jail reform whatever you want to call it and, and I gotta give him respect for that Number seven is Mark, <laughs> AKA Bible study, AKA awkward fist bump. I also have my doubts about Mark as he does not look like a typical inmate. And even at the beginning of season five, the sheriff and the gang officer were like, man, you ain't gonna make it. You know, he looked like, what they say? He looked like a, a chomo. <laughs> but as we all know, Mark surprised all of us. Not only being able to adapt, but also gaining the trust of the head of the woods, Josh, AKA Dick Dastardly. <laughs> His strategy was to do the all too famous Bible study, which no one seemed to come to, but overall was able to get him closer with the other inmates. Number six is Abner, also from season five. Now love him or hate him, Abner was the enforcer for the Chicanos and he made damn sure you knew that every episode. He is a former gang member turned chaplain. Since he had done time before, he was able to adapt pretty quickly. And soon was the right hand man for Chicanos holding the shank. Now there are times I did not agree with how he went about his doing his mission. He seemed to be more concerned about who was with what race. 
and even made a kid, I can't remember the kid's name or pronounce it. Maybe y'all can help me out with that. But he made the kid pick a side because he was mixed. Like nobody, had, that kid was there before him. Before Abner even showed up and nobody bothered the kid. But as soon as Abner went in there, hey man, you gotta pick a side, man. Why? Anyway, he ended up smacking the kid when the kid got smart with him. And Abner pretty much fell apart after that. He started being nervous about who was out to get him and actually wanted to tap out. He started doing this shit. He, he was ready to go. He got, he got, he got nervous. Somebody on this list messed that up for everybody on that season. Number five is Brian from season two. <laughs> he should be more down the list, but there's other people. Brian, in my opinion, was one of the dumbest participants ever in the history of 60 Days In. He was hazed pretty bad by the other inmates, especially Daffron. They made fun of him. They did gump stuff to him. Hey, man, you a man. You got to stand up for yourself. I don't care if you scared, man. You got to say something, man. They're going to keep doing it as we all saw. And he would just he would just bow down to him. I'm sorry, sir. Is it okay if I go to sleep, sir? Come on, man. Brian is not built for jail life. I don't even know why he signed up for it. Probably the money, but... But the other inmates knew that right off the bat and gave him a hard ass time. His looks and demeanor pretty much told them everything they needed to know. They knew he was not meant to be in that jail. So like I said, in my opinion, you should stand up for yourself as a man. And he never did, so he tapped out pretty quickly. All right, so number four, it's Piss Cup Matt from season three. <laughs> Hashtag Hobo Matt. Matt needs no introduction as he's the guy that always cried about his son, thought inmates were out to get him, and he would also try to show off his fake ass MMA moves thinking it was intimidating other inmates, which it wasn't. He also pissed in the cup so he wouldn't wake up a celly, but changed his whole story up at the reunion. Matt's pretty delusional and he kept thinking that him and Tebow were going to get into it. He finally tapped out when Tebow was not removed from the pod, even though Tebow did nothing that warrants a removal. That's how delusional Matt is. He thought the producers were going to help him do get Tebow out of the pod. No, that's not how it works. So he ended up tapping out. Number three is David from season five. David was too arrogant and delusional and by being so, he thought he could talk to a CEO in private, tell him he was a cop on the outside. But by him doing that, it spread, the CEO didn't keep his mouth shut about it. He told other CEOs and it spread like wildfire pretty much and the sheriff told him he had to go. He had got to end the program, it's your fault. Thank you. But David didn't want to see it like that. He did not accept responsibility. He kept lying. He said, no, I did not say that. Yeah, you did, man. They're not going to shut the program down for no reason. Dumbass. But before all this happened, he was pretty much the right-hand man for the kinfolk and made decisions that the head of the kinfolk pretty much went along with. Number two is Rob from season one. Rob, Robert, whatever you want to call him. Rob went to the program thinking it was going to be a country club. He even says that. It was going to be a country club. He found out pretty quick that it wasn't. The other enemies knew right away that something was very wrong with him. He kept messing up his cover story. And he was just being plain weird with the whole prayer group thing. And talking about child molesters. and He was just talking about it too much. And then he tried to get the respect of the inmates. By covering up the camera. Like, what is that going to do? So the sheriff pulled him out, put him in the hole, left him in there. He thought he was having the time of his life in the hole. And then when it was time for him to go back to a pod, the sheriff wanted to send him back to another pod. He was like, nah, he faked an illness. Oh, my side hurts. My side hurts. Nah, you just scared. So he just faked an illness to get off the show and pretty much argued with you if you didn't believe him. Number one is Steve, Lone Wolf Steve from season five. He was supposed to be the sheriff's lone wolf for the program, right? 
But in reality, he was just a plain old dumbass. He went into the jail, overheard a couple of inmates talking about some acid being on stamps, get sent into the jail, and he thought he had the whole shit figured out. Then he got upset, he did a little signal move, producers came in to make sure he was all right, which is protocol. And he just looked at them and was like, yeah, I'm all right, everything's cool. And then got mad because the sheriff didn't come in kicking the door down or something. So he got irritated, he got annoyed, he, he got all the producer on the phone, was like, I'm about to expose the whole program if nobody comes to me in 10 minutes. Hey, they kicked his ass out. You can't be doing that, dumbass. So the sheriff wasn't having that, kicked his ass out of the program. He said it was an achievement for getting kicked out of jail because no one has done that before. Idiot, man. All right, so there it is, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was my top 10 male participants from smartest to dumbest. Now, if you guys don't agree with my list, I don't know what to tell you. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Whether you agree with the list, do I leave somebody out, or would you have made a completely different list? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Be sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and like I said before, we discuss 60 days in pretty much all the time on my live stream, so be sure to follow me on Mixer. Link is in the description below. I would love to hear what you guys think about this list and also about Narcoland. Let's talk about that. I hope to see some of you guys there. I'm also willing to hear suggestions about other top 10 six days in videos I could be doing. I'm thinking about doing a six days in, best moments by season, uh, top 10 female participants, you know, uh, pretty much along them lines. Let me know what you guys think. So, all right, that's it for the video. I love you guys, and as always, see you on the next video. I'm the enforcer from the Chicanos. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, what I was about to say that when you joined the, the Discord app,